Welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I'm Papa Pepper and today we've got an educational one for you about the nine-banded armadillo. This is a young one that my son caught last night. They've been out here in the garden tearing some things up for a bit, but they're really cool creatures and there's a lot of stuff you probably don't know about them and if you don't know about their whole reproductive thing and what happens with their babies, stay tuned because that's going to be one of the last things I cover. This is an absolutely insane animal. So this is the nine-banded armadillo, also called a long-nosed armadillo, a nine-banded long-nosed armadillo, or a common long-nosed armadillo. Um, they don't even always have nine bands. This one actually has ten. That's what my children counted, and I just confirmed that yes, this one actually has ten, but it still falls under the species of a nine-banded armadillo. Um, it's just depending on where they are in their geographical range, they may have a different number. So these are a type of mammal and across South America, Central America, and now up into North America is their range. And they're actually expanding kind of north and east across North America. They started crossing the Rio Grande uh, River at some time into Texas, and they were also introduced into Florida, and since then they've just kind of pushed north and east. They are a mammal. They live a rather solitary life and a rather nocturnal life, which means they mostly come out at night, sometimes on a warm winter day, they'll crawl out of their burrows here in the Ozarks and be foraging around during the day trying to eat stuff. But mostly they're nocturnal, mostly they're solitary, and they do have a pretty wide variety of, of habitats. Uh, we'll find them in extremely wooded places here, kind of some dry barren places almost sometimes, and then a lot of times in the fields as well. They primarily eat insects, so they're an insectivore, and they'll have grubs, worms, termites, ants. They'll sit there and they'll root around in the soil often if they can't find them at the surface level. And when they're doing that, their nose is so sensitive that they can actually detect things sometimes up to like seven or eight inches away from them under the soil. Um, they've also been known to kind of find dead animals and feast on them. People aren't completely sure whether they're just grabbing the maggots and the carrion beetles and stuff off of it, or if they're actually, you know, consuming the dead animal. But it wouldn't be past them to be sucking up the maggots on that carcass. So this is actually one of the larger armadillo species. This one here, like I said, is young, but they're normally going to be about five to 15 pounds, although they can get over 20 pounds. And their total length from the tip of their snout all the way to their tail, you know, this one's already 16, 18 inches and it's young. So a lot of times they're gonna go two to three feet with some of them getting over 40 inches long from snout to the tip of their tail. And often if nothing gets these guys, if they're just allowed to run the course of their life, they're gonna live for about 10 or 15 years. So this nine-banded armadillo, although it can curl somewhat, they don't curl up in a ball like a three-banded armadillo down in South America would. They can kind of curl up a bit, and they can run very fast, actually. I've, I've chased a couple before, and it took me some effort to catch up to them and be able to grab them. They're also known for jumping. So if you see them crossing the road sometimes, a truck or a vehicle comes over, and they can jump three or four feet in the air sometimes, so a lot of times they'll jump up and smash themselves on the bottom of the vehicle, which is traveling at a high rate of speed, and rather than just the vehicle straddling them with a tire on each side passing over, they'll actually hurt themselves by jumping, but if they're startled in the wild, they'll jump up often, they'll take off running, they'll go back to their burrow, they don't really defend themselves, they're more of a flight rather than a, a fight type, type creature, but they can also swim. Um, I, we just released one the other day. My son asked what would happen if we put it in water. I knew they could swim, so they got to see that a bit, but there's two different ways they can swim. One is they'll actually just go underwater and go right along the bottom of the water. And for up to about six minutes, they can hold their breath just kind of crawling along the, the bottom of the lake or the stream bed right across that thing. Or they can kind of inflate their intestines and float and kind of paddle along that way. So armadillo, armadillo means little armored one. They've got kind of these armored plates, if you would, these scales, and that's kind of the outer shell. You can see that it's hinged at these bands, and that's kind of how they bend. And these things, although they're not completely solid like a turtle shell, they are pretty tough. Underneath, 
they're rather unprotected. You can see the, the hair that a mammal would have. On the females, you can see the teats. And then the reproductive organs are under there as well. So besides rooting around in the soil to try to find food, they'll actually dig some pretty good burrows too. They can dig those burrows down five, six, seven feet deep. Um, they're often going to be about eh, eight to ten inches wide so that they're fitting in them. And they can go for up to like 20 feet or 25 feet underground, quite quite big burrows, and then those can also be used for other animals. These guys, it's not uncommon for them to have multiple burrows where they have several different burrows and somehow they know where they all are. If you find one at night sometimes and you try to chase and catch it, it'll run straight into a burrow that it had prepared ahead of time and they knew that it was there. One of the reasons that they have so many different escape mechanisms is that there's quite a few predators that can get them. Alligators, cougars or jaguars, foxes, coyotes, wolves, um, even some raptors like owls or hawks have been known to attack them. So they've got to really be alert, although they don't really have very good visibility. They've got to be alert and they've got to be ready to flee if a predator shows up. Um, because they don't have a ton of things that are able to eat them, that's part of the reason that they're spreading so, uh, so quickly. And then of course their reproductive rate also adds to their population number. They'll have a territory, a home turf the males will, and they'll mark that with some scent glands and with feces and urine. And then the breeding season here in North America, normally July to August. And they'll breed during that time. Um, the female will have one single egg. And that one single egg will get fertilized, but it won't really implant in the wall of the uterus, sometimes for months. Kind of make sure all the external environmental things are in the right place so that the babies are going to have a good opportunity to survive. And you might have heard, wait, how is one single egg, I said, and then babies, I just said. Well, that one single egg, after it implants in the wall of the uterus, it splits into four identical embryos. And they share a placenta for about the four month gestation period. So this one came from one single egg with three other armadillos that were exactly like it. It's kind of like when you get identical twins. It was a single egg that split. This is identical quadruplets. So that single egg splits into four and then they have four that are exactly the same. They're all gonna be the same sex. Just crazy to think about how that happens. Then those identical quadruplets will stay with their mom for about the first three months. And as mammals, they'll be drinking the mother's milk. And after that, they're going to leave the burrow with the mother and begin to forage. And then eventually, at about six months to a year, they're going to be out on their own foraging and looking around for grubs, for worms, for different insects and begin to root around on their own, not drinking the mother's milk anymore. And that's one reason I don't feel as bad having my son catch this and having it be out right now because if it was still drinking its mother's milk, it would still be in the burrow. But now that it's out, that stage of its life has kind of passed. So these ones will sexually mature at about a year. They'll breed yearly for about their 10 to 15 year uh, lifespan or as long as they live. And because of that, you know, you think about four babies every year, they can have 40 or 50 or more babies over the course of their life. So kind of very interesting to think about. They're, they're one of four creatures that can actually carry leprosy. So you have humans that can, chimpanzees, sloths, and armadillos. You can see I'm handling this one right now. That's my choice. It's not exactly um, common to touch an armadillo and get leprosy, but they are one of four species that can carry leprosy. Um, just like it's not common in a lot of places to come in contact with a human and get leprosy, but humans can carry leprosy. These are just an absolutely incredible animal. I thought since we had this one quick, it's kind of a little bit scared and I'm going to get it gone, let it go. Um, we don't kill them, we relocate them. But really cool creature. Wanted to share some amazing facts with you about it. And if you want to learn some other amazing facts about some other animals, feel free to check them out. We'll see you next time. Papa out.